Hello, sir. How are you? Nice to see you. Fine. Nice to see you. Thanks Interesting for your patience. So, so what was that? I mean, you know, without all this, because you know far better than me how all this blah 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 can go on with all these declarations mm -hmm. and all the things that you know this intense and everything. So was it more, you know, honestly speaking, you know, mm -hmm. something like that? Was it more? Was it was it a blah 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 talk again, or there was something something different? I mean, within the, this Ukrainian part, within this Ukrainian discussion. Well, we we don't normally do blah blah, uh, at least when it comes to Ukraine, for sure. Sure, because there's real issues, uh, so uh, we don't really have time for a diplomat too much diplomatic nicety. Uh, the minister this morning was very clear about his commitment to uh, deepening reform, and the secretary general at the beginning of the meeting thanked him personally for his personal role in clearing away some of the bureaucratic hurdles that have made it difficult uh, for our advisors to uh, have their full effect in Ukraine. Well, we talked about it a couple of days ago. You said that you have a dinner about the hybrid war. And you would you would talk about all these corrupt politicians and all these NGOs and all this stuff like that on the during the dinner. Was there a meat on the table when you talked about, I mean, when you talk about some real stuff uh, concerning this, this fight with the, with the corrupt politicians and, and things like that, that, you know, receive money from, from, from Russia, mm. from that side? Well, the, the whole hybrid issue, which includes, of course, uh, attempts to influence political parties inside our countries, uh, was discussed yesterday at the dinner uh, and in fact the presence of the EU high representative was crucial here uh, because NATO has no mandate to reach into member states but of course we can uh, highlight the risk uh, that they face and that uh, they need to address in terms of building resilience but the EU has a much stronger role, more resources uh, and so I know that uh, the high representative Mogherini uh, discusses this with her colleagues as well the hybrid attack includes, of course, uh, attempts to influence domestic politics. We see that in NATO countries as well. It includes uh, use of propaganda, very effective use of media. It includes uh, covert military operations. It includes overt military operations. Ukraine has suffered all of these things. So has Georgia. Uh, to a lesser extent, so has Moldova. Economic cutoffs, energy pressure. Uh, so we have to look at this comprehensively. And NATO and the EU are looking together to see how we can step up support to partners, but also, of course, to reinforce our own resilience. But what, 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 what exactly do you think you can do to, 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 to fight that? I mean, uh, not allowing the Russian channels to be broadcasted or buying a satellite antenna? It is first and foremost for national governments, according to their national legislation, to, uh, to address this. It is not for NATO to tell them how to run their media. Uh, and we really believe in uh, open democratic discussion, but it has to be a fair playing field, a level playing field, transparent and honest, uh, and not be naive about propaganda and about you know less benign, more malign attempts to reach into our country. So you know, I think people are waking up to what is a very well-funded, well-organized. Russia propaganda campaign. It is professional uh, and uh, and it is targeted. So we need to be aware of that uh, and then uh, answer this propaganda with uh, truth so that people see the truth and come to their own opinions. Well, I, I think that it was it was our minister who spoke yesterday and he said, well, as far as I understood that, that they, they've they been preparing this, this, this sheet of paper, the strategy for uh, transforming its military till 2020. And what was interesting and what was uh, what was what was good and what was bad about that? Well, first, our advisors have been part of the process the whole time. Uh, and of course, we've been working with Ukraine for many years. We have had an office in Ukraine for many years, but now we're beefing up that office and our personnel are embedded with the Ministry of Defense personnel to advise on how to develop this kind of strategy. So actually, we, uh, we're quite satisfied 
that uh, especially recently since the minister has taken over we've had a chance to really uh, provide our input into the process now we're going to have to look at what the final results were but actually we don't think it was done too quickly uh, we think that it is being done at the right pace uh, and from these national security strategies which are the big picture then you start to derive in the German grammatical sense uh, the next steps uh, modernizing your defense policy, what kind of forces you need as a result, and then what kind of equipment they will need as a result, and all the training and things that go along with it. And we will be there every step of the way. So, but, but they have the strategy for five years. Mm -hmm. And what, do that, what, what does the strategy include? Well, I think it's actually for the Ukrainian government to outline them. But one thing that the minister did say today was that they intend to work towards NATO standard uh, across the board. And I think we should look at this, at least we do here at NATO, first and foremost as a technical issue. NATO standard is the global standard, highest global standard, for um, multinational operations and for national operations. And even countries that are not members, like Ukraine, more and more uh, take on NATO standard because that allows them to work with others. So we see now UN operations, multinational operations that aren't NATO's, where everyone uses NATO standard. So uh, that way they can work together. So actually, uh, we think it's a good decision. What was actually new about this summit? And what was actually new about this talk? So, I mean, you're, you're a long time expert on NATO. You're a long time insider. Mm -hmm. I've just been watching it for a couple of years, you know? So if you compare it with the, with the relations in Ukraine in previous years, what's, what's, what, what, what makes you sense that this is different, really? Well, what is, each one is new. Each one is different, but here we're at a new stage. And the new stage is for us that the programs we've put in place under these trust funds with these new uh, experts are starting to bite, are starting to have traction. Uh, at the same time, the support from allies outside of a NATO context, and you know the United States, Canada, the UK, are putting more and more bilateral support uh, into Ukraine. Uh, and so I think those two things, the practical sides, are really starting to have their effect. And we see, and this is the other point, we see that on the Ukrainian side, there is more and more action to ensure implementation. And uh, the uh, Ukrainian ambassador, uh, Dolhov, uh, to NATO, is now gonna go back to be the defense minister. And I know he will be keeping a very close eye on ensuring that uh, there is implementation, that money goes where it's supposed to go, that people do what they're supposed to do. Uh, I think that's his main job. So if we talk about amounts of, of amounts of money, amounts of funds within the trust funds, mm -hmm. and you know, we, we, we need some numbers, we need some figures to understand the, the scale of this, uh, uh, of this work. So could you, could you please give us more details? Well, right now it's in the sort of several million euros uh, and less than 10 for now. Uh, but as I'm convinced that as these projects succeed, uh, success follows success, people will want to see traction, movement, progress, and I'm quite confident that there will be more uh, as time goes on.